Hello again. Thanks for joining me uh, with my disclaimers. Uh, I'm not a professional YouTuber, blogger, whatever you want to call it. Um, so bear with me. But I am uh, concerned about Americans who um, don't realize how they've ensnared themselves through their own consent via um, participation, application, receipt of benefits financed by debt. Uh, they're basically back in a neo-feudal bond servitude um, of their own making. And this serves politicians and the government very well under the doctrine of parents patre. If you haven't seen that video, it's the first video I posted here in this series, along with, uh, hey, do you really own that? Um, and for this video, this is kind of a continuation of uh, you don't really own anything. So I thought I'd uh, start off by reviewing... Uh, from the 73rd Congress, first session, Senate document number 43. This is back in April of 1933, uh, shortly after the U.S. Corporation declared bankruptcy on March 9th of 1933. Uh, the ultimate ownership of all property is in the state. Got that? You have a mere legal title to possess and use. This is why you pay uh, property taxes, this is why you have registration and licensing, uh, all these excise taxes, permits, and all that, because you don't really own it, and you can't use somebody else's property without their permission, and license is permission. And uh, I should probably open that up real quick here. Let's see if I can find that real quick. There it is. And what's this? And just, <clears throat> we'll go through. I think I've posted this before already, but we'll do it again. License, the permission by competent authority to do an act which, without such permission, would be illegal, a trespass, or a tort. A certificate of the document itself, which gives permission. Leave to do a thing which licensor could prevent. Permission to do a particular thing, to exercise a certain privilege. Privileges are regulated, controlled, and taxed. Or to carry on a particular business. That's commerce. You can't just operate in the stream of commerce under maritime and UCC commercial law without permission, license, uh, to pursue a certain occupation. Occupation, again, is a kind of a commercial term. We kind of touched on that in the last video. Permission to do something which without the license would be, uh, would not be allowable. Sorry, I missed the not there. Uh, Black's Law Dictionary, 5th edition. So, you know, you can't borrow. If you go take your neighbor's lawnmower uh, without his permission, his license, uh, that's stealing. Okay. And because you don't own, because you don't own the um, um, car in your driveway, you don't own your house. And if you don't understand that yet, go back and watch the two previous videos before this one and you'll start to get that. But um, remember, you're just a mere user. Now, what I want to touch on in this video, uh, and hopefully it'll be a little shorter than the other ones, is this is telling you that you're under the first plank of the Communist Manifesto. What? In America? <laughs> yeah, kids. That's the first plank of the Communist Manifesto. The ultimate ownership of all property is in the state. Individual so-called ownership is only by virtue of government, i.e. law, amounting to mere user, and use must be in accordance with law, the laws of the state, the civil law, and subordinate to the necessities of the state. Ouch. So let me pull up. Most people don't know. They think communism has something to do with totalitarianism. And often it does. But communism is economic, not political necessarily. So you can be a communist nation um, and not even know it. Because you haven't, you haven't slid 
into totalitarianism yet. Now, you could start off as a totalitarian despotic, you know, oligarchy or monarchy or whatever, but um, usually communism is something that comes in first and then from there you slide into uh, tyranny. Now, here I have this document here. It's the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto and how they've been implemented into U.S. civil law. And what I'm saying here, when you read through this, the U.S. has been a communist corporate body politic since the early 1940s. It has merely solidified communism since then and moved more and more and more towards a totalitarian police state. Marx, in his book, basically said, look, if a, if a corporate body politic, a nation, a state, a country, uh, adopt into their own civil municipal laws in some way, shape, or form these 10 planks, then it's a communist nation. Now, most Americans are just too ignorant to understand this or know this. So again, the first plank, and this is, I've repeated this here, abolition of private property and the application of all rent, that's your property taxes. If you don't pay that property tax, is the sheriff going to come and evict you from the state's property? Absolutely. To public purpose. So what does your property tax go to? So like on your, on your house. Now if you rent, you're paying the property tax. Your landlord's only collecting the property tax from you in the rent. And then he's rewriting a check to the county or, you know, state or whoever, where, wherever you're paying your property tax. But when you get that property tax bill, uh, well, what's that going for? Is that going for public purposes? Is that going for public schools? Is that going for curbs and gutters and sewer and police and fire protection and government salaries in your local area? Absolutely. So again, let's repeat this. The ultimate ownership of all property is in the state. Individual so-called ownership is only by virtue of government, civil law, amounting to mere user, legal title, possession and use. And use must be in accordance with the civil law, subordinate to the, subordinate to the necessities of the state. Now, Federal Reserve System is is the big dealio here of that's the fifth plank we're going to get to that but because you don't pay debts again if you don't understand that yet go back and watch the first two videos you have never paid a debt at law you've only discharged debt in civil law under the uh, uh, UCC Uniform Commercial Code Mar um, uh, the um, Maritime Law and Equity okay so the use of Federal Reserve, Fifth Plank Central Bank credit, IOUs, debt, monetized debt, notes, bills, checks, credit cards, all of that. You're only discharging a debt because that's not substance. That's just commercial paper. And uh, so when you're voluntarily doing that. You're voluntarily doing that. So that's, you divide the title. I mentioned that in the last, in the last video. When you discharge a debt, you cannot, you're unjustly enriching yourself because you're using somebody else's IOU to get a hold of substance. That's unjust, uh, unjust enrichment. So the titles are split through a constructive trust immediately raised in law, and you get the legal title, and the state and the central bank have the equitable interest in that property. So you share ownership, but you have an inferior title. So you'll see from the result of that, you'll see um, uh, the uh, property tax, various zoning regulations, school and, and uh, property taxes, building permits and inspections, codes, you know, building codes. It's all because you don't own the property. The real owner is going to tell you how to deal with that property. Again, if you think you own that property, burn it down. Because if you own that property in a lodium, uh, you could burn it down and rebuild your house with no problem. You would not be paying a property tax. But because you don't really own it, this is all that, this is all that uh, 
accordance with law. Okay, so you've got also you got the Bureau of Land Management, you got land use fees, you got zoning, you got model ordinances proposed by the Secretary of Commerce Hoover, um, Herbert Hoover way back in the day. So the Supreme Court's already ruled that zoning, because you don't own the property, is constitutional. So, I mean, you got to get permission to pretty much do everything you want to do on your property. Then you got federally owned lands, you got leasing for grazing, mining, timber usages, and all those fees are paid into the U.S. Treasury. Okay, so now, number two. Do you have a progressive or graduated income tax in the United States? Well, sure you do. That's the second plank. The 16th Amendment to the U.S. Constitution in 1933, or 1913, Social Security Act in 1936, House Joint Resolution 192 in 1933. You had a Victory Tax Act in 1942 with lots of amendments and other ta income tax acts uh, in the state and federal level. The U.S. calls it paying your fair share, comrade, which equates to the communist mantra from each according to his ability to each according to their need. Now, remember, income is not property. Income is a privilege because you've equitably converted your labor to be employed in an occupation within the stream of commerce, earning a, a, a share of the corporate uh, profit and gain from the stream of income denominated in Federal Reserve uh, monetized debt. And because that's a privilege, that's an, uh, a, a tribute you have to, you owe to your master called the federal government and the state government. So that's why income tax is lawful and legal and constitutional because you volunteered for it. Now you don't know when you volunteered. You volunteered when you went out and got a social security number and decided to apply for a job in commerce, to be employed in commerce in an occupation or a profession. Just like you volunteered to buy the gas, to pay the gas tax. When did you volunteer to pay the gas tax, which is also voluntary? When you pulled into a Texaco and stuck the nozzle into your tank and started filling your tank with that commercial gasoline. That's when you volunteered. Now you could have brewed, you could have you know, distilled your own ethanol at home and, and used it for your own private use and you wouldn't have to pay a tax. But you don't know how to do that because you're a dependent ward of the state. You need everything in commerce now. The American people are absolutely the most abject dependent wards of just about anybody, but yet they think they're free. It's absolutely insane. You're not free. You're a serf, you're an indebted serf, you're bound up in a Gordian knot of legal, quasi-adhesion legal contracts of your own making. So number three, abolition of all rights of inheritance. Now this one I put in here, not fully implemented, but close. You know, you got so many federal and state estate taxes, reform probate laws, limited inheritance via arbitrary inheritance tax statutes. You know, and another thing you could put in here, I mean, if you've ever if you've ever gone to a funeral home to have a funeral within the stream of commerce, you're probably looking at twenty grand of the estate that you're trying to inherit from your dead relative. That's going to just go to handle all the affairs of just putting that dead body in the ground, right out of the bat, which are all mandated statutes if you're a person. <laughs> you can't just go out, you know, a free man could build a pine box and go out and dig a hole in his backyard and bury his, you know, a dead baby. You know, if he had a, a child that died or a parent that died, he could just build his own pine box and go bury it out in the backyard, put a marker on it. You're not free. You can't do that. You don't own that property. So, you know, by the time you're all done with uh, inheritance, you, you, there's not much left. Uh, unless it's a fairly large estate, and that's, you know, those people, the people that have fairly large estates, they're going to lock things up in trusts and things like that. They've got other legal vehicles to make sure that they they got it all worked out. Come on, mouse. 
All right, the confiscation of the property of all immigrants and rebels. So most of this you'll see is, um, you know, that a lot of this is due to civil legislation that can come about because of the 14th Amendment. I'll make a video on that. That was that was horrible. Uh, some people love it. And if you're in commerce, uh, the 14th Amendment is your best friend. Uh, if you love corporations, 14th Amendment is your best friend because that's the amendment that made artificial U.S. persons have the same protections and civil rights under the 14th Amendment as natural U.S. persons. So quit bitching about State Farm. He's your brother. He's equal to you, even though he is, or General Electric or any of these corporations, they are equal to you. And actually, they have more power to you because they're kind of eternal. How long has General Electric been alive as an artificial person? Uh, and it's going to be alive probably long bef before uh, after you're dead. Um, as a natural person. Um, so you got property seizures by the IRS, tax and other liens, uh, public law 99570 in 1986, go look that up. E these executive orders uh, give private land to the Department of Urban Development, the imprisonment of terrorists and those who speak out or write against the government, like it, from the 1997 crime or terrorist bill. You know, then you got all the Patriot Act stuff, IRS confiscation of property without due process. Again, you don't really own that. You have a legal title. Now, you do have some property rights in it. The, the subject of property, even with a legal title, you have some rights. But you know, if you don't know and understand this, you can't correctly express those rights because you think you're owning it in a lodium. You don't. You're a renter. You're a serf. Okay, the centralization of credit in the hands of the central bank, uh, or by means of a national bank, uh, the state capital and an exclusive monopoly. Does the Federal Reserve have an exclusive monopoly to um, to monetize and create the be in control of the monetary system in the United States? Absolutely. So that's a pretty simple one. And understand, the Federal Reserve, if you don't know this, is a private corporation. It's, it's a quasi-federal agency. Uh, it's not really federal at all. It's completely independent of the federal government. The only thing really that the federal government does uh, is uh, the president, uh, at the behest of the Federal Reserve Board, <laughs> they give him a list, but he nominates, uh, you know, the chairman. Uh, so this is a credit... Credit debt system nationally organized by the Federal Reserve Act of 1913. All local banks are members of the Fed system and are regulated by the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. House Joint Resolution 192, where you're not paying. Yeah, that's that's kind of a separate thing. Uh, I'd, I'd look that up if I were you. If you want to know more, that was after that bankruptcy in 19 in March of 1933. That Senate report, remember, I, we've already read that several times. Uh, that's my Belgian Malinois thinking she's got to protect everything. Protecting the state's property. <laughs> okay, the centralization of the means of communication and transportation in the hands of the state. So we call that the FCC, Federal Communications Commission, the Department of Transportation, uh, mandated through the Interstate Commerce Commission Act of 19. Of 1887, uh, and we had another one of those. I think there's a typo there. I think that's uh, Inter Interstate Commerce Commissions Act 1934. Um, the Interstate Commerce Commission established in 38. We got the Federal Aviation Administration, the Federal Communications Commission. You got several executive orders, state mandated driver's licenses, Department of Transportation regulations. There's also a postal monopoly. You got Amtrak, Conrail, uh, several things here where your communication and transportation um, the, uh, is centralized in the state through licensing, regulation, and these alphabet soup agencies. And again, that's because even General Electric, Twitter, Facebook, uh, Microsoft, uh, Joe Smith, uh, you know, Every 14th Amendment U.S. citizen, whether artificial or natural, doesn't own anything. They have legal title. Uh, Facebook hasn't paid any debts at law. Neither has Joe Smith. 
Everybody uses Federal Reserve credit, uh, monetized debt to discharge their debts in the commercial law. So Facebook doesn't own anything any more than you do. And uh, they just have that mere legal title. Okay. So number seven, the extension of factories and instruments of production owned by the state, the bringing into cultivation of wastelands and the improvement of the soil generally in accordance with the common plan. Remember, the state owns it all. They have the equitable titles because everything is being discharged through the Fifth Plank Central Bank. So uh, what this is, we call this generally, it's called corporate capacity. Okay, think of it like this. You may not be a corporation, but if you look like a duck, walk like a duck, talk like a duck, quack like a duck, act like a duck, you're going to be treated like a duck. So uh, now what I'm saying there is if you look like, if you act like a corporation, you engage in corporate capacity, well then we're going to look at you as though you're engaged in corporate capacity and we're going to treat you that way. Okay, and that's a that's a that's your employment. <laughs> you're going you're going from natural and common law labor and equitably converting that to step into the stream of commerce to engage in corporate capacity uh, to earn your share of the corporate profit and gain from the stream of commerce denominated in Federal Reserve note dollar units. Okay. Uh, we got Desert Entry Act, we got the Department of Agriculture, Department of Commerce, Labor, Department of the Interior, Environmental Protection Agency, Bureau of Land Management, Bureau of Reclamation, Bureau of Mines, National Park Service, the IRS to control businesses through corporate regulations, Title 26 and taxes, liens, uh, you know, all that stuff. Uh, we call this public business. And, and that's not part, you think yeah, that, that word public there does not mean, well, it's publicly owned. Um, if you have a, if you're a plumber and you are a registered business in the state, remember, you don't own anything. You just have a legal title. You, if you're engaged in commerce through the stream of commerce, you are in public business. You're open to the public. You're affecting the public interest. You're probably advertising to the public. The minute you start affecting the public, the king, the government, the ruling authority of that law has a duty to protect the public and they can regulate and control that. This is all of these 10 planks revolve around that deal right there. Commerce. Commerce. This is the Federalist a wet dream. The Anti-Federalists are rolling over in their graves at what, what's happened. They were right. What they warned you in the Anti-Federalist papers, uh, you know, they, they were right. So you got the equal liability of all to labor, establishment of industrial armies, especially for agriculture. So the U.S. calls it the Social Security Administration, the Department of Labor, you got a national debt and inflation caused by the communal central bank, the fifth plank central bank. So you got a need for now they've generated a need for both parents to go into the into employment in an occupation in the stream of commerce to be a two income family. OK. And and they've sold this to you. All right. So you you've got civil rights act. You're you're basically this is this is you know this is what the equity thing is all about, right? We're going to reduce all of these human resources that are our chattel bond servants to make them all equal through equity, because we want a unified industrial army. That's it. Okay. So number nine, combination of agriculture with manufacturing industries, the gradual abolition of the distinction between town and country by a more equitable distribution of the population over the country. So we call this Planning Reorganization Act of 1949, zoning. You got super corporate farms now instead of family farms. 
even families who are still farming are 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 um, you know doing everything commercially and basically working for Cargill or Monsanto or ConAgra you know they're you know they're they're just totally dependent upon these huge agribusiness corporations and government subsidies government subsidies are what keep farming alive for small farmers but that's why most of them are selling out or as the farming generation the parents that farmed and the children say you know this is nuts i'm not doing this i'm leaving the farm well that farm gets bought up by a super corporate farm um, and moves on so you've got that as well again this is all dealing with commerce kids commerce and number 10 well how are we going to produce this uh this industrial army well we need a public school number 10 free education for all children in government schools the abolition of children's factory labor in its present form what's you done you know kids can't go to work uh, unless you're Amish, kids can go to work earlier. But if you're if you're anything other than Amish, uh, your kids can't go to work until they're I don't know 14 or something. Look at your state code. Combination of education with industrial production. They're not trying to educate you. They're indoctrinating you to be a good punch cl uh, clock puncher, a good taxpayer, subservient taxpayer. They want obeisance from their human chattel resources. So people are being taxed to support what the U.S. body politic calls public schools, which train the young to work for the communal debt system. The U.S. also calls it the Department of Education, the National Education Association, Outcome-Based Education, Common Core. You've been doing this for a long time. This started in Germany. This public school system was brought to America by in Germany in the uh, mid to late 1800s after the Civil War system and it just took off and sprouted like a weed and you love it your children are dumb as posts but you love it and like I said here none are more hopelessly enslaved than those who falsely believe you're free and this form of government's been around forever now this is all dealing with commerce all these tin planks are dealing with commerce because they want you trained to participate in that commercial system. Why? Because Congress and the state has absolute plenary power over the commercial law. And if you contract into it and volunteer and you become dependent on it, then they then they absolutely own you. Now, go back and watch the Parents Patre, Government as Father or Parent. That was a video that I did earlier. Watch the other videos, and this will also, if you haven't, if this is the one you found first, you got to go back and watch those other ones, because this will start making a lot more sense for you. Okay? Hey, thanks for watching. I'll try to keep putting these out for you. Bye-bye.